welcome back. I finished the um, marker pen work and I have started doing some painting in. Um, I just want to tell you something before I carry on. An interesting thing happened a few minutes ago. I was speaking to a friend on Skype and she asked me what I was doing and I held this up for her to look at. She said, wow, that looks like fun. And I thought, thank you, you've hit the nail right on the head. This is what this process is all about. It's about having fun. So I'm gonna start having fun now with my colors. And this bit down here that I said I felt a bit cross when I was doing that, I've used some bright colors to um, just liven it up a bit. And I'm very into, at the moment, I don't know why, bright pink, turquoise, lovely lime green, and some lemon. And this is um, the painting now. You'll start to see, um, those of you who are doing the beginner's course or any other of the watercolour workshops I do, the difference in the turquoise there. There's a really dark bit of turquoise and there's a light bit and this is simply because there's more water added to the pigment colour there. So this is good for you learning about your watercolours if you're watercolour painting um, as well as just sort of um, playing about. Uh, we call it colour values in watercolour speak. Um, okay so what have I got now then? Um, Let's see, where am I going to go next? Now, I'm going to let the colours choose me. I hope you understand what I mean like by that. Let the colours choose me. I've just spied on my palette a bright orange. So I'm going to use that. Don't worry if you paint over the lines. Doesn't matter. And this permanent um, marker, because it's permanent, it's a chemical thingy, um, it won't smudge when you paint and it also acts as a little bit of a resist to the water colour paint that we're putting on. Now I forgot to unplug the phone, so if anybody should call I will just stop the film and resume after the call. Now I don't know why I put that there because I really wanted gaps everywhere else but maybe it's talking to you. I mean sort of like different colours next to that one but that's okay. Now I'm going to... Oh just yawn, excuse me. Oh just stretch a little bit. Um, I now feel that I want a really bright yellow. Let the colours choose you. Oh that's nice bright isn't it? So I don't know whether you have already done your um, your outline yet. If you have I hope you enjoyed it. That one I think. Now, it's going to be interesting to see, am I going to stay in a colour family as it were? By that I mean yellows and oranges, and, or am I going to do something a bit off the wall? What's this over here? Ooh, it's a sort of a grey, grey purple. Ooh, I don't know if I like that really. What I'm going to do there? There we are. It's nearly gone. Change your mind if you want to. Nothing is compulsory. It's exactly as you want it to be. Um, what else am I going to do? No, I do feel a bit of bright blue coming on, but not that murky colour. What blue do I want? I've got another turquoise here. Let's have a look at that. Paint it over that bit. There we go. It's a really light turquoise. Oh, that's a bit more. 
Let's just put a bit more on that. Just make it a bit brighter. It's the same colour as that one, it's just got a bit more paint in it. And now I feel, I feel a red coming on. Woo! So I didn't fall into a delicate graduated shading which I might normally have done if I thought about it. I just literally let the colours grab me. And I'm going to let the colours grab me again. Let me just bring my... What's that? I do end up with all sorts of things in my paint boxes. And of course different makes. Ooh, that's nice sort of sea green. Oh, well how appropriate. Different makes. It can be called the same colour, but it will look quite different. I'm just going to blob some... Oh, look! Oh, that's fun. Let's have a bit more. Let's just put a blob of water in. I'm just going to just mudges it around a bit. Okay, let's have a bit of water and just... Yes, quite often I'll see when teaching people, I suggest a colour, oh, use a, I don't know, sap green or whatever. And then they do it and I say, that's sap green. And, uh, you know, it just depends on the manufacturer. This colour looks interesting. I tried some different paints recently. So um, that's why they're dotted in my box. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how I paint where the dots are because that isn't giving me a joined up a space to work in, is it, if you know what I mean? To use this sort of, oh, it's rather nice. Viridian, emeraldy green. Maybe with a painting like this, I need to do this speed it up camera work. But then, where would the fun be in that? So I hope you're not getting bored while I'm muttering along. Okay, I seem to fall into some sort of pattern there of alternate spikes, fins, whatever you want to call them. Well, that doesn't matter. Now I suddenly feel I want to just wet this area and just drop some curls. My brush wasn't that clean. Doesn't matter. Just drop some colour in. And again, I find this. Just what colours draw me? Ooh, it's a bit of orange that was mixed in my palette. So I'm just, see I've wet the paper first. Now I'm just dropping it in. it's quite nice if you can keep your colours nice and clean. That's not so clean because of that um, bit of green that was still on my brush. So do think about that. Um, what next? This ultramarine blue is calling me. It's calling me. And it's going there.
and I've just got my arm on there. So, ooh, let's see what mark that makes. Oh, look. It's a good place to experiment with techniques as well when you're doing this sort of thing. If you're going to be going on to painting in a more, oh, I don't know, dare I say, structured and paint a picture. One of my online students posted on our Facebook group um, the little coloured postcards I was talking about earlier. She'd cut hers up and made them into bookmarks and they looked lovely. Punch a hole in the bottom and stick a bit of ribbon or something through. Remember finger painting when you were a child, or you've done with your children or your grandchildren? Let's take a bit of that blue, just because it's there. Fingerprints. Where next then? Where next? I want to make more clean colours. I'm going to fill in here just some water. If you ever look into colour therapy and colour theory, that can be quite an interesting subject. And I feel drawn towards this lovely bright yellow. So what does that tell me? I'm keeping it my secret. I'm just dropping that in and I'm going to let it just sit there. Then I'm going to another shade of yellow a brighter yellow but of a different sort of mix and drop that in and just let them let them do their own thing if you want to you can tilt your paper and let them run around a bit because the watercolour paint will only go where the water is. If it's the area is dry, it won't go there. You may well also be aware of the sudden availability and popularity of colouring in books for adults because it helps them switch off the monkey mind, going jabba 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 jabba. Some people do crosswords, some people do sudoku, some people paint. Ah, flames. I suppose it's got to be red. He only uses them for making toast, of course, because he's a very friendly dragon. Okay, just drop in some red in. And I'll just let that find its own way. merge quite a bit there. I'm just going to dump a bit off over the spots. Just a little bit so the spots come through again. That makes interesting marks. This is going to end up down here a very muddy area if I'm not careful but we don't mind because what we might do when that's dry 
is I might do some more markers around those dots. Okay, so there's the red. Oh, let's have a little bit of fun there. Oh, ah, no, that's bled over there. Oh. This occasion I don't want it, so I'll just dab it off. Okay. This is about not being in control, but I just wanted the red in there, but that's all right too. Okay, I'm going to leave that there for now, conclude this lecture and let that dry, and then I'll come back to it again.